Meanwhile, aboard the Cajun Queen, Pierre LeBlanc, known by his fellow anglers as Scaly Pete. Daddy hunted sharks. I hunt sharks. It's in the blood. There was somebody better at this, you'd be following them, yeah? Oh, people We've got a lot of wrong ideas about sharks. Scientists say we gotta coexist. Now, how you gonna coexist with that shark, huh? Shark just wanna do one thing. That's kill you, eat you, and you out. What I do, I consider a sacred honor. Kill them all if I could. Too bad, ain't but 24 hours to a day. Shark spotted in Fatik Bayou. Huh. Several deaths reported. Shark can be identified by rusty harpoon embedded in flank. Get the f*** out of my way. Got a job to do. This is an adult bull shark. Fast, fierce, and armed quite literally to the teeth, she has little to fear here in the Gulf. The muscular marvel confidently moves through its watery world. The predator's 350 fearsome teeth are put on full display. Exhibiting behavior more common to a thresher shark, this bull makes creative use of her powerful tail. A shark fin is a sinister reminder to humans that the ocean remains a wild and untamed domain. The bull performs an acrobatic feat worthy of an orca cruelly imprisoned and put on display in a marine park stunt show. The big fish plunges to the ocean below. The bull's speed is astounding for a large marine predator. A breaching shark is a rare and calorie-intensive spectacle.
Now it is well known that sharks feed on mollusks, fish, and seals. Less discussed is their propensity to feed on fear. emphasize that this sort of targeted violence is quite unusual for a shark. That shark needs a good whack on their nose. Go get him, Chad. How you doing there, shark? Dinner coming, boys. Let's get her up on deck, huh? On board the Cajun Queen, Scaly Pete looks over the catch of the day. Yeah, this my daddy's iron, all right. This ain't the shark. Not the one I was looking for. How do you know? How I know? Not big enough. This look like a mega to you. Oh, oh looky here. She's on for me. Hello! <laughs> Are you mama in there? So I can identify her. Next time I see her, when I spear her. The tiny pup responds with an instinct for survival. You maybe want to turn off the 
Piano. A famous big game hunter once posited that after an animal had tasted human flesh, it forsakes its natural prey in a deadly single-minded search for the most dangerous game. Remember, when planning a cemetery, try to avoid high-risk coastal areas. An insatiable fish, the bull shark is nine-tenths appetite. The bull retreats to the grotto for refuge and quiet reflection. Exhibiting behavior more common to whales and dolphins, this shark is able to use biosonar to locate potential prey. I have one of those new pop-up tub stoppers at home, and let me tell you, those things are just a magnet for hair and debris. Muscalunge, or muskie, is a freshwater fish commonly found throughout the Great Lakes region, so I have no idea what it's doing here.
bull shark is an animal of broad dietary proclivities. Like most fish out of water, sharks have trouble breathing. Sometimes even sharks just need to dirty bulk. A local critic once wrote that Amos Beauregard was the Rodin of the bayou, but Beauregard was functionally illiterate and had no idea who Rodin was. Shark's propensity to clear the ocean of its assorted detritus is one of their most valuable functions. The versatile grouper can be fried, grilled, skewered, used in soups, or made into a horrible tasting gelato.
overhunting of Fawtix Keystone predators has led to a super abundance of catfish, which is just fine by local bully Rosie the Alligator. Goaded by lusty appetites, the shark's sole aim is to eat and evolve. The gluttonous grouper eats fish, octopi, and crustaceans. The bull shark demonstrates the importance of getting enough minerals in her diet.
I used to buy sunshine sunscreen until I read it contains seven hormone-disrupting chemicals and palm oil. Rising sea levels have made once unreachable corners of the bayou accessible. Some shark species practice cannibalism in utero. This shark understands that she needs to eat essential minerals to stay healthy and grow. As a result of industrial pollution and sewage wastewater, Dead Horse Lake was designated a Superfund site in 1996. appreciate the grant from Sunshine Solutions that made this show possible. We'd also like to remind viewers that mass cloning and gene editing for today's military is safer than ever.
The artist spent 16 years building this sculpture out of trash pulled from the lake, only to have it thrown back in the lake by intoxicated locals. The shark returns once again to her safe haven. Hunger is a driving force for the bull shark. Hunters hold a deep hatred of wildlife in their hearts, none more so than the shark hunter. Kind of regular there from Mingo Joe's. People say it's a tourist trap. But it's the only plague to get a decent Cesarec that don't have me on their do not serve list.
Human's attention spans are short. They've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. Shark hunting was prohibited by royal decree in ancient Fiji. But this is decided. Not ancient Fiji, there's way more liquor stores and payday lenders. I mean, I'm not an ornithologist, but I think it's probably a bad idea to get in the middle of flamingo's natural migration cycles. Just saying. Shark versus dolphin, orca versus giant squid, boat versus pylon. When establishing dominance, the contest is usually a deadly one, with survival as the prize. Can't hide all damn day. The powers of society have retaliated with deterrent action, but mankind is ultimately impotent to stop Mother Nature's vengeance. the waters around Trash Island, where they enjoy a steady diet of hypodermic needles and use pregnancy tests.
have made a home near the retired nuclear cooling towers. This is a great opportunity for the shark to test the theory that exposure to gamma rays gives you superpowers. Boat. Wicked things gleam.
Even to the most dedicated sailor, bull sharks represent a fearsome and powerful unknown. Red McCord. I wouldn't know him from Adam. If he'd kill another fisherman, that's between them and him, yeah? Until local police departments settle a dispute over jurisdiction, these two remain a popular attraction for selfie-seeking snorkelers.
The needle tooth nightmare, the Barracuda. Cooters are often nicknamed cooters, but I refuse to be on familiar terms with any snake-faced mullet munchers. While most recognize it as the title of a classic rock radio staple, did you know that it's also a fish? Well, it's true. The bull retreats to the grotto for refuge and quiet reflection.
Lacking aptitude in the ancient art of the ninja, the turtle's defense is insufficient against its superior opponent.
for our crew to earn the Shark Hunters' trust, to convince them we were not insurance investigators questioning their disability claims. Shark at a dead horse lake. Bounty time, fellas. Say what you want. Them hobos, good workers. Unlike my so-called son, Kyle. That's why I pay him to stay on the lookout for that shark. Shark's propensity to clear the ocean of its assorted detritus is one of their most valuable functions. A 
breeze would be nice. It's hurting me. I know it. The hunt ends, but this is a mere pause in the eternal struggle between man and nature. Some shark species practice cannibalism in utero. Catfish have specialized taste buds all over their bodies, so they know that you're the one that peeked in the water.
From Galapagos to Malaysia, sea turtles live all over the world. But only the trashy ones live in Daytona. Bull shark is known to be a voracious, if hardly discriminating, eater.
an insatiable fish, the bull shark is nine-tenths appetite. The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food. The bull shark demonstrates the importance of getting enough minerals in her diet. While the state of Dead Horse Lake is alarming, we can be assured that a new era of environmental stewardship will restore order to our treasured wild places. <laughs> Shark spots the Barracuda's glinting scales. Difficult to tell from this vantage whether this creature is a true albino or merely a system.
spring of 73 was a magical time in Port Clovis, when local favorite Trash Talk placed 20th in the Derby, and the city placed first in the country for petty theft. When shark season ends, hunters return to their normal routine of bouncing checks at liquor stores. The Scourge of the Swampland, Bayou Willie. It's in front of us! time will tell whether government actions can diminish Port Clovis's reputation as a shark attack hotspot. It takes three hours of training and eight dollars to become a licensed shark hunter. Though very few bother with this formality. The bull shark's liver is large and tedious to haul around on land. The hunt ends, but this is a mere pause in the eternal struggle between man and nature. Dead Horse Lake should be embarrassing, right? But in Port Clovis, they put up a monument. Gotta be the best at something. The grotto provides a brief respite from the Sturm und Drang of the Gulf. Little fanfare, 
Another bounty hunt comes to a close. The shark hears the faint, distant sound of a dinner gong. As with many social movements, the annual Driftwood Man Festival purports to foster progressive change, but it's really just an excuse for hippies to flout public nudity laws. I would like to assure the Antolini crime family that this footage will in no way be used in the final edit of our program.
Must be quick to dodge the savage slash of the Barracuda's underfoot. In spite of terms like card shark and pull shark, actual sharks excel neither at poker nor billiards. Despite the catfish's highly developed auditory system, lab tests revealed they still prefer CDs over vinyl. Vegetation salinity zones in this area include fresh marsh, intermediate marsh, brackish marsh, and saline marsh. The resilient bull shark is able to navigate all of them with ease.
The hunter lashes out at its target with an extended tail fin. If a group of consenting adults wants to perform cryptic rites to shadow forth the prophecy of the great old ones, <laughs> who am I to judge? This instantized protein makes a great between-meal supplement, giving the shark the energy she needs to put on serious mass. Remember, if you find yourself hard aground, the best thing to do is stay with your canoe and die the death of an honorable seaman. Supercharged with gene-altering mutagens, the shark now has an asymmetric edge on the competition. While adorable, these soft stuff mascots don't provide much in the way of nutritional value. Someone should have taken a gun safety class.
These scavengers of the sea are vital in cleaning the ocean floors of edible and semi-edible detritus. In many places see more human fatalities caused by giant catfish than sharks, such as the Amazon Basin or Splash Mania Water Park in Garland, Texas. Clock would hardly be the strangest thing ever retrieved from a crocodile's mouth. Even for sharks, it's important to create personal time for sober self-reflection. display a remarkable lack of fear when approaching boats or ships.
Make no mistake, those shark hunters may occasionally drink on the job. They know, actually, that's pretty irresponsible. The bartender life ender, Bobby Bojangles. See her. Oh God, it got me. Despite Port Clovis' best efforts, the aquatic beast refuses to be tamed. Shark bounties became commonplace here after the previous mayor's practice of hiring Fijian shark charmers proved largely ineffective. While most know him as the friendly face of Captain Winky's fish and chips, in real life, the pirate was a genocidal monster who murdered and enslaved thousands. The powers of society have retaliated with deterrent. Back on board the Cajun Queen. That's Kyle, my son. He's just here for the summer. Studies marine biology. <laughs> Look at that. I got one hand can still tie a hook. You got two can barely tie his shoes. <laughs> Must get that from his mama. Yeah. He used to have my daddy around. Spent a lot of time together. But we wasn't close. He was a shark on her. That's all he was. If anybody were gonna catch the mega, it'd be him. <laughs> Thought it was a government experiment, got himself loose. Boy, he wanted that shark. On the bed. Found it once. Didn't catch it, no. What... What happened to your father? Huh? What happened? Look, uh... I ain't got time to answer questions all day. Got work to do. Just like Kyle LeBlanc, our young bull is the inheritor of a long family tradition, struggling to find her place in the world. The 
bull shark is quite a marvel of biological engineering. A shark's tail alone can draw blood. Handyman special overlooking breathtaking panoramic lake views. Open living with vintage appeal. Call Deborah. Golden Shores was built as vacation residences for wealthy out-of-towners, with spectacular ocean views, private beach access, and a gate to keep out the locals. Shark is now an adult, and she should probably spend less, save more, and start researching indexed mutual funds.
The predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. Sharks' propensity to clear the ocean of its assorted detritus is one of their most valuable functions. Over the course of a bull shark's life, it will ingest quite a broad assortment of lots of jets. Sometimes even sharks just need to dirty ball. Anyone who has delved into the stomach contents of a shark is acutely aware that they'll eat just about anything. The largest mako ever caught weighed 805 pounds. For perspective, that's like a thousand cans of condensed tomato soup. Torpedo sh nothing gets a kingfish in the mood quite like watching a 73-year-old hit a double boat. The fact that they've turned the waters off Baton Tordu into a spawning ground attests to their love of seniors golf.
Another danger on the water for shark hunters? Determined process servers. Their boats laden with bench warrants and affidavits. Hunters waste little time hitting the water when a shark becomes a threat to human life. With their bitter feuds and quasi-legal get-rich-quick schemes set aside for now, the shark hunters get to work. The Savage Shrimper, Pookie Paul. Throwing caution to the wind, the big fish escalates its battle against Fort Clovis. Deaths like these shatter humans' atavistic notions of their place in the food chain. Sapphire Bay's famous Pier 1 provides visitors with plenty of skee-ball, popcorn shrimp, and elegantly airbrushed t-shirts. Port Clovis has grown bored of the hunt, leaving our shark to fight another day.
rapacious rover is always swimming, searching for anything to satisfy the gluttony that is their defining trait. Hunger is a driving force for the bull shark. The solitary hunter stumbles upon another source of nourishment. The likelihood of catastrophic risk scenarios wasn't really considered when developers built a golf course in a flood zone. is about saving lives, but it's also about safeguarding tourism revenue. Fin traders come every year to Baton Tordu, because what other way is there to celebrate killing beautiful animals for tasteless nutritionless body parts than a $450 round of golf? Shark must return to her native ocean home. Back when I was a boy, 
I thought I'd be a golfer. Well, damn, if I didn't like sinking sharks, a lot more better than sinking the ice. The fish takes quick, evasive action. Shark hunters stalk their prey, fully aware of the grisly horrors that await them upon a single mist. The battle is over, but the war goes on. Mako can be blackened, marinated, cubed for soups or stews, even chunked for kebabs and served over spiced cashew rice. How small or docile is anatomically a potential source of danger. import this Mako from Sri Lanka and train it to guard their community? Not likely, but let's pretend they did, as it makes for a more interesting storyline.
the kill or be killed world of the sea, performance enhancing mutagens provide benefits that could mean the difference between life and death. Bull sharks have a habit of gobbling up anything that finds its way into the water. Monster approaches, ready to attack without hesitation. Some appearance of the Barracuda does little to intimidate the shark.
Upon using this medication, if you experience priapism, do not attempt to improvise your own surgical shunt. It's here in the grotto that the shark can discover the absolute serenity deep within her soul. Sultan of Speed, the Mako. A hungry heart approaches the vulnerable. and aggressive, the Mako is known as the Peregrine Falcon of Sharks. But as the Peregrine is a land-based bird, this designation means nothing to the Mako.
Consistently the most difficult hole on the course, many golfers struggle with this par 7 humdinger. From the moment she's born, the shark's cold, expressionless eyes are constantly on the watch for food. In the kill or be killed world of the sea, performance enhancing mutagens provide benefits that could mean the difference between life and death. Only here can the shark discover the miracle of self-love. As far back as 492 BCE, Greek historian Herodotus described how sharks had devoured an entire Persian war fleet off the Thessalian coast. The rogue shark must now be killed and publicly displayed to satisfy the city's thirst for revenge. The fishing phenom, Candyman Curtis. The latest cycle of attacks will certainly be among the most infamous chapters in the long troubled history of human shark relations. I am. 
game with Spartans. Well, I'm sure the shark's dead. Port Clovis has grown bored of the hunt, leaving our sh somebody's drinking team as a drowning problem. Sometimes even sharks just need to dirty bulk. The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food. Golf ball diving is an exciting and growing field where you can risk alligators and venomous snakes for 7 to 10 cents per ball. Mistake. Those shark hunters may occasionally drink on the job. They know, actually, that's pretty irresponsible. Hold 
say? Suck it in one shot, like a of it. And if Cliff Gillis tell you I didn't, he'll lie. The hunt is over, and there will be an inevitable rush on dollar drafts at Flamingo Joe's. Attention spans are short. We've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. The bull shark's liver is large and tedious to haul around on land. indiscriminate violence. Some just want to catch some rays and scope some babes. magnetic field may provide several cues useful for shark navigation. Parties always end in a fight over whether a poodle wheat and terrier mix should be called a woodle or a wheat.
no one can tell what may be found in a shark's stomach, it's truly the ocean's garbage can. Cajuns that fish and trap here don't use depth finders or GPSs. They know this bayou by heart. The bull has a lusty appetite, to be sure.
A mother catfish will eat her own young. So this shark quite possibly saved the lives of an estimated thousands of baby catfish. The Bayou Brawler, the American Alligator. The best rule to follow when encountering a strange fish is to identify it first, then kill it. Rosie has been a star in Big B's Bayou Buddy stunt show, but our shark is far too young to appreciate Rosie's classic brand of celebrity. Peace of the grotto enables the shark to approach the world with greater confidence and effectiveness. Historically, overdevelopment of the shoreline leads to a wide variety of negative environmental impacts. But you should see the Italian design walk-in closets inside these condos. Back aboard the Cajun Queen, family tensions are at an all-time high. Kyle, what's wrong? Can you catch no reef? I can, but this one's like 20 feet. 15. Whatever. Can't do it. I'll come out there. I'll do it. The old man with one hand. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't be mutilating baby sharks. What are you say? Nothing. Boy, I couldn't catch in a diaper. He telling me how to honor shark. Believe that? I mean, I came down here thinking it'd be a good opportunity for some father-son bonding. But now, I don't know. I might start looking for another summer job. Hey, not everybody made to be a fisherman. I just hope this whole university thing works out for him, yeah?
Tiger Roos are part of a complete balanced breakfast for anyone aspiring to one day suffer from fatty liver disease. By identifying key disaster-related issues, commercial developers can be more informed as they continue recklessly building along the coast. It's here in the grotto that the shark can discover the absolute serenity deep within her soul. Using crude weapons to take down alpha predators is a skill many shark hunters honed while in prison. Heat and lack of oxygen can be taxing for a shark. Take Kyle to the carnival when he wasn't nothing but an itty bitty boy. The fact that he was afraid of that Ferris wheel should have told me he wasn't never gonna be no shark hunter. The hunt ends, but this is a mere pause in the eternal struggle between man and nature. Long a haven for small government ideologues, Port Clovis prides itself in its lax amusement park safety standards.
The name Hammerhead is really reductionist. America's largest shark finning enterprise, Mama Maybell Bryant has collected quite a fleet of recreational boats. Her fail sons, Randall and Tyson, can often be spotted piloting them around Sapphire Bay. are not generally what I'd consider food fish. People eat fried clam strips, so what do I know? of parrotfish here have kept Sapphire Bay's local hammerhead healthy and strange looking. Quite a strange conglomeration of stuff will end up in the stomachs of sharks. Goaded by lusty appetites, the shark's sole aim is to eat and evolve. Traveling around, we are constantly reminded of how man's intrusion has disrupted the fragile equilibrium of the marine world.
Like most American cities, the founders of Port Clovis were Freemasons, and probably Illuminati, who congregated in secret UFO bases to perform Luciferian blood rituals. The sound of shotguns and molly hatchet disturbs the serenity of an otherwise calm sea, the shark hunters are near. be my favorite lighthouse. Got a keeper named Emil. Always at the best call liquor. Now they got it out of me. That computer's a lot less fun to drink with. Some sharks are scavengers, indiscriminately consuming anything that's vaguely edible. That about wraps it up. It's another unsuccessful shark hunt for the people of Port Clovis. didn't take ancient sailors long to recognize that certain ocean creatures meant them harm. Chief among these was the shark.
Believe it or not, people paid over $12,000 to sleep in these tents and listen to Swedish DJs for an entire weekend. It takes three hours of training and eight dollars to become a licensed shark hunter. Though very few bother with this formality. Shark problem. Any hunters that can handle it. Bounty. The predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. First Long Island's on me. Another shark hunt, a piece of the grotto, enables the shark to approach the world with greater confidence and effectiveness. Golden Shore's development was originally met with local protest, but those objections were easily circumvented with campaign donations to Planning Commission Director Steve Traeger.
the shark returns to the grotto to focus on personal transformation. Evolutionary Anomaly, The Hammerhead. Shark triumphs, overcoming her opponent's clearly superior depth perception. Even for sharks, it's important to create personal time for sober self-reflection.
having evaded justice for her heinous crimes, the shark is now the subject of a bounty. The Hoosier Hotshot, Ensign Tyler Dixon. Look forward. The shark's reckless behavior only further incenses Port Clovis's citizens. No one knows how long a shark can live out of water. If this one doesn't return to the sea, she'll eventually find out. Fair price on fees. Should have brought my fish finder. She gotta be somewhere out here. The hell is it? The battle is over, but the war goes on.
putting sharks in their place, hunters ensure they'll stay in their lane, so we don't have a Planet of the Apes situation on our hands. Unless sit up on his trawler waving his hunting rifle, yelling at me to sail faster. A bull shark is an animal of broad dietary proclivities. It seems Port Clovis has forgotten all about its rogue shark, for now. As twilight falls, Pete is in an uncharacteristically quiet mood. It's a dangerous job. It's not something unknown to me. Well, you want to see dangerous? Look at that, yeah? That's PT 522. My daddy crewed that off of Guadalcanal. It was Navy. Gunner's mate. Pacific Theater. But when I was 16 men, came back a day later with three. Man survives all that, just to die here in the Gulf. What happened to him? Boy, you don't like me saying this. But my daddy, his granddaddy, was killed by a mega shark. I, I, I'm sorry. He's talking about a prehistoric fish that went extinct 2.6 million years ago. I seen it. Now, you were a kid. Ain't they discover new animals all the time? Sort of. Well, not, not exactly. In lots of cases, they're just corrections of species with different names. Also stuff like misspelling. But, I just say it. Maybe there are things in the water that ain't in your textbook. Stick around. Maybe you learn a thing or two this summer. Whatever. The ocean is vast. The majority of it still remains unmapped and unexplored by mankind. Perhaps Kyle shouldn't be so quick to dismiss his father's fevered ramblings. Ready, boy. Now we playing with power. Wanna make a coup de out of you? You stop that this right now, second. Give that big ring a tease. Y'all working my last nerve, Curly. Cut, cut. 
Scaly Pete remains resolute. Where's she at? I don't know. We're gonna put us in the race! Can! Get that can! Dance! Pick it one! What remains of the boat lurches, then slowly sinks to the bottom of the sea. The shark is now an elder, and thus begins a new battle against systemic age discrimination.
The bull shark demonstrates the importance of getting enough minerals in her diet. While homeless and itinerant, hobos will work for a living. They are not to be confused with bums, who are sedentary and refuse to work. Kinda like my son Jeffrey. Baton Tordu was built just in time for the slow decline of golf as a popular sport. The shark listens determinedly for the irregular low-frequency sound of an animal in peril. Swimming at a waste disposal site heightens your risk of a shark attack. Not to mention all varieties of diarrheal illnesses.
Catfish are cavity nesters, so mind your crevices. During the 1920s, Sapphire Bay's pier was host to a collection of merry-go-rounds, wooden roller coasters, and fun houses, all of which would be destroyed in a succession of tragic fires. Prosperity Sands features glittering white beaches fenced off for the sole enjoyment of the ultra-rich, mega-rich, and super-rich. Traveling around, we are constantly reminded of how man's intrusion has disrupted the fragile equilibrium of the marine world. This trimaran, like many before it, was lost in its journey to the mythological dry land. Not really a gourmand, the bull shark will eat just about anything. It's generally believed that a shark never sleeps. The bull shark is able to attain larger maximal sizes through selective feeding. The bull retreats to the grotto for refuge and quiet reflection.
Fostering a balanced ecosystem is a complex and multifaceted process. What harm could arise from killing a bunch of seals? for our crew to earn the Shark Hunter's trust, to convince them we were not insurance investigators questioning their disability claims. Six hundred twenty-nine days, Prosperity Sands ain't had no shark attacks. You can thank OP for that. Prosperity Sands sure ain't. Five hundred million years of terrestrial evolution reaches its apex with Prosperity Sand's spacious flow-through floor plans. I just know she's near. Show yourself. kill for the same reason we all do, to feel complete.
The ocean is a fluid and fascinating world, always changing, forever in motion. Beach erosion can be harmful for ecosystems by changing habitat conditions for such local fauna as seals, sea turtles, birds, and fish. Lacking sufficient sand or protective dunes, heavily developed areas risk great danger from hurricanes and the corn-fed colossus, Butcher Boy Brady. This cycle of attacks will certainly be among the most infamous chapters in the long troubled history of human shark relations. And there will be an inevitable rush on dollar drafts at Flamingo Jones. They appreciate human sacrifices, the eldritch gods of yore are seldom enthused about being summoned to Port Clovis.
Pulling off a successful casino heist is made even harder when you drive off the road into the ocean and drown. Operated by Roger Cantrell, recently broke the state record for number of revocable commercial fishing offenses. Mutagen 23 is certainly heating up the evolutionary arms race. Blah, 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 late stage capitalism. Humans' attention spans are short. They've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. Port Clovis considered removing these naval mines after the war, but the city had already spent its annual budget booking a Nickelback cover band for the 4th of July. Caviar Key features painted sails, a luxury five-star resort built over the remains of Tunamacha, a pre-Columbian city that was once host to the most advanced civilization in ancient America. There would have been more protests surrounding Prosperity Sands were not the public already so numbed about ecological concerns in general. Caviar Key provides a scenic setting for humanity's destructive impact on the natural world. The ancient Greeks believed that King Poseidon ruled the waters, whereas here at Prosperity Sands, they're ruled by luxury leisure groups international. The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food.
traditional apprehension methods having failed, authorities send out a motley collection of untrained, unlicensed individuals to do their work for them. The predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. The hunt ends, but the shark returns to the grotto to focus on personal transformation. Emperor of the Deep, the Great White. is often referred to as the king of the ocean, which gives it a skewed understanding of the role of a monarch in modern society. When it was discovered that their Stonehenge replica was astronomically misaligned, enraged Port Clovians threw it in the ocean.
The sea wolf remains acutely aware of anything that might constitute food. Traveling around, we are constantly reminded of how man's intrusion has disrupted the fragile equilibrium of the marine world. The appetite of this shark is nearly insatiable. A quiet space is the ideal stage for the shark to meditate and harness her pure potentiality. There would have been more protests surrounding Prosperity Sands were not the public already so numbed about ecological concerns in general. What's in the barrels? Fish food. Pete, whatever this is, can I ask you not to do it? I'm gonna get that shark. One way or another. It's, it's just that this is unnecessarily destructive. I mean, it's just one shark. There's a whole ecosystem. One shark? That killed my boy. Pete, look, I, I understand. Wanna keep tugging on this knot, you? Great white ever caught measured 12 and a half meters. For perspective, that's like if you had five and a half Shaquille O'Neal's and lined them up head to toe on the ground. There's a very real risk of drowning while surfing, but at least you'll leave behind a cool-looking skeleton. The water along Caviar Key is frequently described as gin clear, which reminds me, I could go for another Singapore sling. The planet's great tides encircle the globe in constant. Anyone who has delved into the stomach contents of a shark is acutely aware that they'll eat just about anything.
No one can tell what may be found in a shark's stomach. It's truly the ocean's garbage can. To see this area is to witness the inability of the hydrosphere to support the growth of humanized landscapes along the Gulf. Port Clovis City Council never misses an opportunity for cross-franchising. Concentrations of metals and hydro... No one knows who built this mysterious underwater base, but odds are they probably own a Nehru jacket and a Persian cat. As we face impending resource scarcity and declining living standards, it's nice to know that in the meantime there's still a place to get a good bamboo fusion massage. Even after the creation of a killer clown task force, clown-related homicide still remains a problem in Port Clovis. The predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. These scavengers of the sea are vital in cleaning the ocean floors of edible and semi-edible detritus. Once more, the shark turns back to this place of centered calm. Any panic from the shark's target could spell death.
turtle numbers have exploded here. Bad news for seagrass, great news for orcas who enjoy torturing and eating them. Rainbow trout? Killer whales are well-known predators of several shark species. While fears of ecological apocalypse are valid, you should see Exaco Petroleum's previous quarter's earnings. The idea that shorelines belong to the public comes from Roman Emperor Justinian, but only because he wasn't able to consult with the assassin. After years of eating the same meal of frozen herring at Fish Fingers, Casanita just wants her favorite comfort food, raw shark liver. It's here in the grotto that the shark can discover the absolute serenity deep within her soul. Shark is never one to pass up a fat fiesta.
To look at the coast is to recognize that the boundary between sea and land is transitory, and that all life on Earth is just a cosmic accident. It would be more practical simply to close the beaches. But why do that when you can just set loose a gang of amphetamine-fueled locals with guns? I ex is folk dog they boat at painted sails. But, you know, so do a lot of other New York couillons. Coastal overdevelopment creates a riskier, more complex local environment. The white and black attack, the orca. the bounty. the featured attraction at marine mammal parks now have a new favorite trick, killing things. Orcas do enjoy playing with toys, but not half as much as a day-old seal carcass. Bull shark is an animal of broad dietary proclivities.
A day at the beach is a summer ritual that wouldn't be complete without plenty of sunshine, sandcastles, and circarial dermatitis. Yes, it's quite beautiful here. Unfortunately, bull sharks can't see color. Clovis locals seldom miss an opportunity to indulge in mindless, gratuitous slaughter. Generous bounty for a shark out caviar heat. I catch three of them killer whales, they got their fish fingers. You could say I got a real keen eye for talent. Although, the wheelers really gotta work on those side aerials. shark must now be killed and publicly displayed to satisfy the city's thirst for revenge.
The shark's aggressiveness only solidifies its mythic stature. The Toast of the Coast, Lieutenant Shannon Sims. Time will tell whether government actions can diminish Port Clovis' reputation as a shark attack hotspot. Port Clovis retaliates against the shark by sending some of its most disreputable citizens. The underwater world is a fantasia, bustling with color and activity. This is my least favorite part of the job. It's another unsuccessful shark hunt for the people of Port Clovis. The ocean is a fluid and fascinating world, always changing, forever in motion. Even the self-driving technology of Gazorpazorp is not without its reliability concerns. As is the trend in other coastal towns, long stretches of Port Clovis's shoreline are now the exclusive domain of the wealthy. Hunters hold a deep hatred of wildlife in their hearts, none more so than the shark. Shop here, right there. Nowhere else in town got that mango butter facial scrub I like. The shark is now a mega shark often referred to by scientists as the 64-ounce gas station soda of large marine predators. Hold up now, boys. Hold up. Oh, suffocating out today. Anybody 
Anybody else see that? With little fanfare, another bounty hunt comes to a close. ends. But this is a mere pause in the eternal struggle between man and nature. Hell, I don't know. Maybe she's scared of us. The shark's liver is large and tedious to haul around on land. Don't know nothing about no raves. Were you throwing a fiddle door on the beach at night? You just ask him to get bit. As the terrain of the Gulf Coast is relatively flat, even a small rise in sea levels could trigger an immense loss of land. If you're like me, you're probably wondering what their secret is for such durable papier-mâché. Well, I'm sure the shark's dead. It seems Port Clovis has forgotten all about its rogue shark, for now. Many consider the Gulf Stream to be the world's greatest current, but for my money, you can't beat that Kurashio. Pete has a new boat, and from the looks of it, there are several features probably not legal for civilian use. So you found me. So what? Uh... Pete, I, I don't know what all this is, but you're scaring us. <laughs> what you gotta be scared about? You a shark? 
Uh, Pete, I don't want to, but I, I think we need to get the police, maybe the Coast Guard involved. You think I'm crazy? No, I'm the most sane man you ever seen. Look, I didn't get it easy. But when some, some shark take everything I got, I'll give her the same chance she gave my boy. None! Now get the f*** off my boat, for I'll kill you too. The f*** I say! <laughs> Hope you got a hunger on! We serving shark ain't too fair tonight! Pete has built an impressive battleship. But will it be enough to endure the prehistoric might of a mega shark?
году! Laissez les bons temps rouler. I suppose there's a lesson to be gleaned here. Something about how the increasing commodification of the natural world has placed humans on a collision course with an environmental apocalypse. But this is a basic cable show where people tune in to watch sharks kill people and people kill sharks. So until next fishing season, this is Man Eater.
The shark has somehow survived the multi-gigajoule explosion unscathed. But just like that, she's on to other things. In case you're wondering about me, the network Namby Pambies canceled our program due to depictions of actual death. So I'm now broadcasting online, free from the meddling of censorious busybodies. Hi, my name is Trip Westy. Recently, I produced the television nature series, Man Eater. Over the course of filming, our cameras witnessed unprecedented displays of evolution, strange mutations never before observed by the human eye. When I spoke to a prominent marine biologist, she claimed it was due to Port Clovis' extreme levels of radioactivity and industrial effluent but I couldn't shake the feeling that she was merely trying to placate. What did she really know? And why wasn't she telling me? Then, as if the stars had all aligned, the former Q-level security specialist sat down next to me. What he told me would haunt me for the better part of a year and lead me back to Port Clovis on a dangerous journey through dark secrets, government cover-ups, and a clandestine cabal of extraterrestrial elites single-mindedly determined to enforce their will on humankind. Come with me on a quest for the truth. Truth Quest. Judging by the bull's behavior, she smells a new creature. If it threatens her apex status, a heated confrontation is inevitable. The predator must act quickly, lest she lose the scent of her prey. The shark works the odor trail with a singular focus. Perhaps she's caught scent of Jormungandr, the world-encircling sea serpent of Norse legend. What admirable hustle! The creature has disappeared, probably whisked away by a government boat, lest we capture the beast on video. It's her! The modern-day Kriegsmarine has arrived, its frothing wake churning with the blood of the innocent. Questers, whatever it is the shark caught scent, the secretive black ops unit conspicuously called NWO has captured it. What might be their nefarious plan? So many sheeple going about their daily lives, ignorant that their minds are held captive by forces they don't know or understand. The markings on this satellite suggest that it belongs to Site P, a top secret military compound, and perhaps the home base of these NWO troops.
Unfortunately, I suspect there's more where that came from. Regarding these spills, I'm proposing complicity on the part of Mayor Wade Hibbard. You see, Hibbard owns 50 shares in Schlumberg, who's owned by Exico, who are partners with Saxwell Gold and Varcon, the manufacturer of oil dispersant emulsifex. Therefore, Hibbard made money on the cleanup. This is the Plover Island Complex, commonly referred to as Site P. Whatever bizarre and dark depravity lurks within its bowels, we're about to find out. the insectoids go to such extraordinary measures? Could it be that Port Clovis is one of the 13 dimensional portals spoken of by the Sumerian prophets?
again appear the great galleons of the global conspiratorial elite. The shark uses lipids from high-fat fare like this to help fuel her reign of terror. The big fish seek shelter as the NWO shock troops assemble. This satellite is but one of millions in the villainous cabal's interstellar quantum communications hub. is done. This mineral supplement wouldn't be necessary if this shark ate a more nutritious, well-balanced diet. Some sharks are scavengers, indiscriminately consuming anything that's vaguely edible.
Anticipating a reprisal, the Predator flees. The NWO is still in hot pursuit. The fish must be cunning, because unlike her pursuers, she doesn't have a 5,000 horsepower engine. This footage could only be captured with the best professional-grade Swedish drone camera. She successfully evaded the New World shock troops, at least for the time being. Government suppressed free energy source, the Electric Great White. The large and numerous teeth of the Electric Great White aren't so frightening when you consider that you'd probably die from electrocution first. was clearly in the pocket of the Mexican consuls. decides to nourish herself on the local farm, for this battle can't be won on an empty stomach.
I started this channel six months ago, only to be met with personal attacks by uninformed citizens like Bong Lord 69 who commented, what a dumb A-word, F-word, piece of S-word. Well, it continues in that vein for several paragraphs. W.O. threatens to execute Protocol 5. These are dark actors playing dark games, and they don't appreciate anyone attempting to foil their diabolical schemes. Did what she's already witnessed, the Predator lashes out against the Illuminous Group's deceitful agenda. Venture further into the heart of darkness. You may be shocked by the atrocities unfolding before you. It's over, boys and girls. Tune in tomorrow. The enemy's plans for a global fascist dictatorship are put on hold. users from commenting. This is just the sort of response I prepared for after dedicating myself to informing the masses about the real truth behind global events. I don't know, but perhaps the Shadow Orca has something to do with it.
be a costly victory for the shark. Holistic heart health begins with Killer Whale Blood. With Big Fat Heart Plus, you can rest assured knowing there's never any harmful fillers or additives. Just 100% or sinus orca. It's premium cardiovascular support, and it's only from Survival Life. The shark struggles to disentangle the Illuminist's web of fabrication and untruth. The Masonic forces will stop at nothing to maintain power. Many people believe that 300,000 years ago, the insectoids created humans to mine the Earth's gold. But this is absurd. They're clearly more interested in our copper reserves. The shark has taken a keen interest in an electrical transformer. Maybe the shark is a metaphor. Are you toying with me? Sharky, Sharky! You can tell that this is old World War II technology due to all the flickering. I'm getting impatient. You've all burned enough gas on this. Come back to base. The enemy is thwarted by the force of righteous truth and must return again to plotting and scheming.
That transformer must have been powering NASA's insidious Project Bluebeam. But how did the shark know? The explosion has drawn unwanted attention. The patriotic Piscus must be swift to avoid capture. She should hurry, as trespassing on military property could result in a six-month prison sentence. W.O. doggedly pursues the fleeing predator. I haven't seen a fish this wily since Babe Winkleman tried to catch that pike in northwestern Ontario. The bull's olfactory center registers the sweet smell of freedom. Now we see what the NWO's been hiding. Inside sources have ascertained its name, Moloch. This devious aquatic bioweapon is designed to disperse a mist of viral particulates. A potent combination of Ebola, anthrax, and Lassa fever. Within weeks, it will spread from Port Clovis to infect the entire world. Then, Big Pharma will reveal that they've developed a vaccine. The price? Every country must submit to the Insectoid Brotherhood. We must stop them before they can implement their demonic program. Don't be fooled by this elaborate diorama. The real horrors are buried deep underground. I don't want to alarm. But I have reason to believe I'm being spied on by the Pakistani government. The shadowy cabal despises them for her independence of mind and spirit. Just an update, I performed my own technical surveillance countermeasures and didn't find any bugs, hidden cameras, or GPS trackers. Yet. Sunshine side effect, the bone sperm wave. Not the evening yet. Let me tell you something about waves. They're into gun run, rugby, sex trap. Like the feudal thrashing of a dying lion, we are witnessing the collapse of the old and impotent New World Order.
by rogue sentations, and only this shark is paying attention. The shark explodes off the blocks. This predator really needs to push the pace. Notice how she positions her fins at different angles, altering the flow of the water around her. But can she repeat that performance in the 2024 Paris Games? Castle Bravo Survivor, the irradiated bone sperm whale. Brotherhood knows that the war isn't won by conventional weapons alone. That's why they've sent the waves. Intel source informs me that that whale was part of an elaborate international spy ring. How did the shark? The appetite of this shark is nearly insatiable.
Beneath his human mask, the insectoid helmsman gazes with dichotic eyes, and with pincers gnashing, proclaims his ship the Ship of Death. I know, I've claimed everything from Pearl Harbor to the sinking of the Lusitania was a false flag. But this is not a false flag. I repeat, this is not a false flag. Going back to ancient times, extraterrestrials have demanded animal sacrifices, and what they are not given, they take by force.
Today, the shark has been implanted with an RFID chip to monitor her every move. Core intergenerational Satanist TJ Toffer. The insectoid high priests of war won't be satisfied until the gulf turns red with the blood of the slain. The government enforcers retreat to polish their jackboots. The insectoids are rattled that the shark will soon reveal the truth of their agenda. The shark seems to have stumbled into another training exercise for a future hostile takeover. The combination of 
hot metal, high heat, and aviation fuel can have explosive results. Dominance has always been part of the hidden agenda of the insectoid elite. They hate our boats because our boats mean free. You can see these helicopters, but what about all the stealth tactical weaponry we can see? Set sail to claim its watery impact. Degree York Wright Mason, Ron Honeywell.
This is war, and it isn't always pretty. Goaded by lusty appetites, the shark's sole aim is to eat and evolve. Everybody had their fun? Okay, top down, let's go. Back to base. Like the futile thrashing of a dying lion, we are witnessing the collapse of the old and impotent New World Order. The big fish must be eradicated, lest she unmask the New World Order's evil agenda.
This sortie is clearly in violation of the Constitution. Druid High Priestess Jocelyn Sandini. Jackbooted thugs don't stand a chance against America's patriotic fish. These are dark actors playing dark games, and they don't appreciate anyone attempting to foil their diabolical schemes.
the modern-day Kriegsmarine has arrived, its frothing wake churning with the blood of the innocent. History repeats itself when people forget. One wonders why these things are happening now. Is it mere coincidence that if you divide 2021 by 3, then subtract 7.6666666667. You get the number of the beast. 666. Energized by demon powers, the Illuminati prove a dastardly foe. Dimensional insectoid shapeshifter, Vic Mandrake.
The Dark Brotherhood will carry out their global coup d'etat by any means they deem necessary. Destroy their hellish evil. These insectoids masquerading as men want to annihilate the world as we know it. This begs the question, why do the extraterrestrial elite work so tirelessly to defend the water? Does water have some mystical significance in their unholy ceremonial rites? If only, like this shark, we too rebel against the alien threat, we can reawaken humankind and revive the Atlantean Golden Age. The New World Order has begun to amass its forces.
This ship is mother of harlots and abominations, Barbara Terra Nova. Impact with the aliens.
The bioweapon has reached America's shores, perhaps having already unleashed a rapid viral agent upon the citizenry. Now, the NWO will hold the country ransom, offering the vaccine in exchange for compliance. A source close to the Army Corps of Engineers informs me that the group has been involved in a purposely directed Gulf depopulation program for years. This could be the bioweapons doing, sure. But first, perhaps I should consult my friend, a world-renowned expert on the subject of ancient giants. That's what the shark thinks of the HPV vaccine. appears determined to disperse its infectious bodily fluids anywhere and everywhere. The shark hunting sector has experienced significant growth, leaving a lot of local openings for amusement ride operators. This may look like a friendly local bait shop, but it's actually a satanic temple of death, terror, and animal sa- What are these? My guess is powerful influencing machines designed to make us hate America and love you. It's another unsuccessful shark hunt for the people of Port Clovis.
Having evaded justice for her heinous crime, the shark is now the subject of a bounty. Influencing machine is destroyed. Americans, freed from its spell, will forsake their palak paneer for good old fashioned cheeseburgers. Judging by the behavior of wildlife in this area, the bioweapon is also spreading estrogen-mimicking endocrine disruptors. Another shark hunt draws to a close. Operation Garden Plot was just the beginning. The Rex 84 program is underway. The insectoids are rounding us up for their re education. I don't know about you, but I have a small saxitoxin-filled needle that I am prepared to use in case I'm captured for forced labor in the insectoid's copper mines. Clearly, the NWO sunk this ship for trying to deliver food, water, and medicine to imperiled patriots. Humans' attention spans are short. They've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. Private beaches remind us that the guile of the Illuminati has accomplished its goal, and that we've all become servile rule followers.
Atomic Energy Commission project, the irradiated electric great white. This great white superpower, you need a region steeped in high energy radiation, such as the Van Allen radiation. Further evidence that this fish is not of this Another one off the enemy. The NWO death squads have made clear their intention to overthrow private property. Extrajudicial killings of all owners of homes with a second bathroom are right around the corner. Mark my words. Source says they're going to shut down this broadcast under Executive Order 10995. These days, you have to be ready for anything, especially poisonous space clouds. The Earth's weakening magnetosphere is allowing these dangerous clouds to enter deep into our atmosphere, putting you and the ones you love at risk. Noctilsafe is a revolutionary new supplement that will protect your family from the effects of space cloud exposure, such as cosmic spore syndrome and acute intergalactitis. Noctilsafe. When the space clouds come, Will you be prepared? More of these machines dispersing mental poison from hell, creating a lumpen mass of propaganda-drugged Americans who'd rather watch Aubrey Dominique take the Coco Bop challenge than read the Constitution. Shark Hunt is traditionally celebrated with off-brand cinnamon whiskey and large quantities of pseudo -ephedra.
Sorry, Dominique. You delusional insectoid pawn. And we're off to the races. That anal fin is really important as a vertical stabilizer. The shark's dorsal helps her keep balance as she moves through the water. The shark doesn't appear to be in swimming shape. Look at the technique. She's really transferring her muscle power from her body to the water. What a feat of fastness. There's no question that waffle-centric restaurants are a thinly veiled plot to topple the very foundations of our democracy. The fish has no tolerance for crypto Satanist agents of the Illuminati. Port Clovis is thoroughly energized by the short mass. have 233 viewers. Ugh. I'm gonna send a tersely worded email to YouTube CEO about squelching free speech. The battle is over, but the war goes on.
Love books but don't love to read? Audilist.com has over 150,000 titles you can start listening to today. Like Gordon A. Boyd's Electric Toothbrushes, The Little Spy in Your Medicine Cabinet. The shark is known to be a voracious, if hardly discriminating, eater. The NWO's hatred of free markets and affordable consumer goods has truly reached its apotheosis. A shrill chorus of ankle bracelet alarms fills the air as shark hunters leave their homes to track our bullshit. The insectoids have worked hard to ensure that they and their conspirators continue to occupy Port Clovis's positions of power, such as Planning Commission Director Steve Trader. This is just the beginning. Next comes the countrywide search and seizure of our weapons, gold stores, and freeze-dried beef stroganoff. Apropos of nothing, I'd just like to remind you that the Founders specifically denied Congress the power to print paper currency. Intimidated by the shark's fierce love of country and implacable devotion to the ideals of liberty, the bioweapon flees to open waters. Shark shouldn't be that hard to find. Hell, I don't know. Maybe she's scared of us. Humans' attention spans are short. They've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. All these recent oil spills are merely contrived events designed to cripple the Gulf's fishing industry. Hmm. It appears that the bioweapon is not only carrying a viral agent, but the HPV vaccine as well.
of the bottomless pit, Moloch. The shark responds out of fear for the sovereignty of the United States and Earth itself. Everything is energy, even physical matter. So maybe, if we all focus our minds on the destruction of this unholy weapon, it will happen.
There it is. A radio-equipped electrode implanted in the Great White's limbic system. An insectoid-designed stimo seed. Like heroic Neo, the shark has freed us from the Matrix. Now, we can unplug from the metal coils that once enslaved us, leave our mechanical caves, and greet this new dawn of truth. It's been 90 days since my last Truth Quest broadcast. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering where I've been. Well, for the past year or so, I've been partaking daily of ayahuasca. In fact, the very concept of Truth Quest came to me during a powerful vision. It was during my last vidcast that I experienced what my wife described as a psychotic break. The next day, she and my son Stephen staged a family intervention. Well, I'm happy to report that since then, I've filed for divorce. Now I have time to dedicate myself to my true calling. Questers, we know that reality is just a mirage. Somewhere through the crack between time and space, great cosmic truths remain, still awaiting discovery. These are the obscure and unmarked points along the road of our truth quest. <laughs>